We are the biggest entrepreneur platform on the planet. Welcome to Business Rockstars, where I'm interviewing Michael Trainer. He was the co-creator of Global Citizen and is now the founder of Peak Mind. Thank you so much for stopping by. Really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. So for those who are not familiar, if you could tell us both about your current business, Peak Mind, and the organization that you helped create, Global Citizen. Sure, I'll start. I'll start with Global Citizen. So, Global Citizen uh, eventuated out of a, out of a challenge. Uh, both Peak Mind and Global Citizen, actually. So, with Global Citizen, the challenge was how do we bring awareness and action around ending extreme poverty? And there was a gentleman by the Hugh Evan, by the name of Hugh Evans who asked me about um, what we could do to put extreme poverty on the map in the U.S. And together with Hugh and a, and a wonderful team, we set about creating a music festival because music obviously is a universal language and uh, is a way in which you can enroll a tremendous number of people into a collective vision. The innovation there was actually making it so that people had to take action to earn their tickets. So what we did was we created a digital platform called Global Citizen, and people took actions around issues affecting the extreme poor. And then we leveraged um, those voices, the voices of everyday people, uh, to get world leaders to come on stage. Uh, in year one, it was uh, Neil Young, the Black Keys, the Foo Fighters, John Legend sang Imagine. And we had folks like the President uh, of the World Bank, Secretary General of the United Nations, and leveraged the stage to secure about $1.3 billion in new commitments around programs serving the world's poor. So that was a, a profound um, experience to go from ideation to execution. We did that in about nine months, which was really miraculous through an incredible team. And uh, about three years in, my father, unfortunately, was diagnosed with dementia. And I did a deep dive and realized with Global Citizen, I had been focusing on issues like polio and malaria, but now realized that diseases like dementia and diabetes, and dementia is now being called type 3 diabetes, were about to be uh, a global pandemic. Uh, right now, half of the Chinese population alone is pre-diabetic, half of the U.S. population is pre-diabetic. And it's... Um, it's projected that one in two people will actually get Alzheimer's. And it onsets 30 years before you see the first symptoms. So it's actually relevant for, for people in our generation. And so I said, okay, I'll, I've had this incredible experience with Global Citizen. How can I apply those same principles to build uh, awareness and action around health and wellness? And so that was the inception point for Peak Mind. Peak Mind is a 21st century education platform to help people unlock their full potential. And specifically focused in its first iteration around health and wellness, our first event was with His Holiness the Dalai Lama two years ago, and it was focused around meditation. Amazing, incredible. And I know off camera, we talked about how your why is so important. And that's something that you recommend for any entrepreneur on their journey. So explain to me, first of all, what you're defining as a why and how it's really driven your business. Sure. Uh, well, Simon Sinek obviously has done an incredible TED Talk, which I recommend uh, all the viewers check out around finding your why. For me, um, you know, a lot of people get caught up in the what. You know, I'll have a lot of young entrepreneurs saying, well, how did you do this? Um, you know, what, what can I do next? You know, can I pick your brain to do this? And I think, I think those are all great questions, but I think the first most foundational question is, why do you want to do it, right? Getting really clear on that. And, you know, society... Uh, your parents, uh, your best friend, everyone will have a different opinion of, around what you should do, but it's really getting clear within. Um, and so for me, um, taking issues around, uh, taking action around issues affecting the extreme poor was a deep passion because I lived in Sri Lanka for two years. And so I saw the conditions people were faced with living on $1.25 a day, and I saw the injustice, and I was deeply enrolled into the vision of building a movement to end extreme poverty. Had I not had that why, the challenges that inevitably came in the process of building this, uh, this, this incredible um, entity and ultimately organization would have derailed me. And I think in the same context with Peak Mind, my why is, is connected to my father, uh, the man I love most on the planet. And so being exposed to seeing what it is like to face someone who is slowly losing themselves and their identity and knowing that that's something that's going to face so many people around the planet and, and the degree to which that impacts us uh, on every level, emotionally, uh, financially. Um, it, 
it, it's an extraordinary driver. So my recommendation is for people to really tap into what they care deeply about um, and, and start from there. there. There's a quote that I love by Howard Thurman, and he says, don't ask what the world needs, ask what makes you come alive. I and love do that, that quote, yeah. Because what the world really needs is for people to come alive. And I feel like the first foundational question is, what makes you come alive? And then from there, ask, what does the world really need? Well, yeah, that's the fuel that really keeps you going. But you're so right. So often entrepreneurs have a good idea and it's more of the what. Yeah. And I kind of look at that as a format. Like, how is it packaged? How is it tangible? But then from there, they're determining what their mission is, what their why is. But you're recommending, as do a lot of uh, wise people, recommend starting with the why, starting with the mission, and then making decisions and deciding how you want to package whatever it is that you're offering from there, correct? 100%. I think Anything that you're up to, and I recommend that people get up to big things because uh, visions beyond ourselves uh, inspire us and inspire others. And one of the core tenets I would say to any successful entrepreneur is surrounding themselves with incredible people and building an incredible team. You know, it's, it's, it's often said you're, you're the sum of the five people you spend the most time with. Well, if you're going to be uh, creating an epic vision as an entrepreneur, um, you've got to make sure that your why and your true north is totally in, in alignment with the team that you're you're creating with. So if you if you if you haven't fully locked in on that vision, or if that vision ultimately feels too self-serving, then it can derail the execution of that vision. And inevitably, as we all know, you know it's not a straight shot. You know it's beset with challenges. Uh, the hero's journey of the entrepreneur is is filled with dark nights and obstacles. And so. It's really, you know, the gut checks that take you back to your why that can lead you over those obstacles and to success. But if you're not clear on that, um, the possibility for failure is, is profound. Okay, we're going to take a quick break, but sit tight because when we come back, we are going to talk about relationship building the right way. We are the biggest entrepreneur platform on the planet. This is Business Rockstars. In college, when we started this company, well, in senior year, as soon as we saw that uh, selling bikes to college students could be a viable business. At that moment, we were entrepreneurs. Now, Office Land. I think we do a lot of cool things in the company with the focus of building this culture of people having fun here and, and people really focusing on our customers. My first day at the time, I had a huge beard, uh, so I got a bunch of beard memes sent to me in my email. We bicker about music choices, and that's yeah. probably what I get the most complaints about, but you know. Welcome to Pure Cycles HQ. This is uh, our creative office. We do all of our art and creative content and marketing out here. Say hi, everyone. A few steps later, we're now in our showroom, which is pretty brand new for us. We've never really done the retail thing, and now we're doing it. I think I'm at Austin on like the first day of school. In kindergarten, we were like up in some tree house um, and like we like met each other and like became friends. And we were throwing like bark onto a tree and that was like, hey, I'll do that too. And we were fast friends. So uh, we're in our warehouse here now. Um, this is where orders are picked and kind of organized. This side is mostly fixed gear single speed bikes. And then over to our right, we have our different accessories. And then we're gonna go into our mechanic area. A couple of the guys will make some custom builds. So you'll ha we'll have different projects out here ranging from you know, bikes for Facebook to Domino's, or we'll have movie studios that want bikes for commercials and we'll make those out in this mechanic area. The environment here is great with all the stuff we have, you know, all around. I think really try to make it fun. So, you know, whether it's break, lunch, whatever, it's usually a good spot to, you know, hang out. The success of the company is all on us and um, the direction of the company is all on us. So, you know, being such a small company, we're able to implement things and come up with ideas and actually execute on those ideas. My favorite thing about this place is the bikes, I think. I love riding the bikes. I love building up new bikes and checking out new products and prototypes. And it's just a cool open space to explore and, and build new and cool stuff.
We are the biggest entrepreneur platform on the planet. Welcome back to Business Rockstars, where we are continuing our conversation with the founder of Peak Mind. So obviously you've attracted some incredible leaders to be a part of this. How did you do it? How did you build these relationships? Because I know that even with Global Citizen, you had some really big names on board from year one. Sure, yeah. Uh, well, uh, to go back to, to the Global Citizen context, um, you know, I think if, there's a variety of different ways to answer that question. I think, I think inevitably it comes down to having a great team and declaring a huge vision and then enrolling people into that vision and being savvy about who's gonna care about that vision, right? So, you know, year one, we were working with the Gates Foundation and building a movement around polio eradication. And our first headliner was actually Neil Young, who many people don't know, but he had uh, polio when he was young. So, so speaking in a way that is relevant and resonant with those who care deeply about your, your shared vision, um, in the context of uh, Peak Mind, you know, our first event was with the Dalai Lama. I actually had a vision that I wanted to popularize meditation in places where it had not yet um, taken root. And so I talked to folks like Usher and Common, uh, who actually runs a summer camp in Wisconsin, which I know is where you're from, yes. um, taking inner, inner city youth from Chicago, right, which is besieged by violence. So not a lot of people know, however, that Common is a yogi and a meditator, but Kids on the South Side of Chicago obviously resonate a lot more with common talking about it than say, you know, potentially like a Deepak Chopra, right? Because they see themselves in, in, in him. So for me, looking at someone like the Dalai Lama, I, I knew that here's someone who obviously cares deeply about, um, about his vision of compassion. I also saw the strategic opportunity. His 80th birthday was, was coming up. And I knew that I could talk to folks who would want to be in part part of a of an honoring of his holiness by talking about their meditation experience. So so it's 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 being I think a strategic opportunist, you know, in the context of Central Park, it's also a strategic opportunity. The Beatles never played there, the Rolling Stones never played there. It's an iconic, it's on the Great Lawn in Central Park. It's this iconic piece of real estate. It was the largest syndicated broadcast of its time of its kind, so you had everyone from the New York Times to Yahoo showing it on their home screen. So both they cared deeply about the issue. They were enrolled into the cause. The fact that people had to earn their ticket to get there, which is mm -hmm. a huge thing. That was our, our great innovation, right? Like it wasn't that people just casually were buying their ticket. They were they cared so deeply about Neil Young, about the Foo Fighters, that they took action around issues mm -hmm. affecting the extreme poor, learning about the content, learning about the issues, taking action, signing petitions. So that enabled them to be there. So I think if you if you create a vision that's big enough and you and you have your why again is clear and then you can enroll people into the story of both how it can be impactful um, but also um, ways in which by building this incredible community of people who are willing to support you into this kind of shared vision I think the degree to which you can achieve things beyond your reckoning is, is profound. Yeah, a lot of it comes back to that narrative that you were speaking about. And I know that before we started this interview, you said, you know, a lot of times people get it wrong when it comes to relationship building. They're approaching people with, what can you do for me? Can you pick or can I pick your brain? But instead approaching it as, what can I do for you? How can this benefit you? Yeah. The challenge is I think most people will meet someone and they'll say, I get emails like this all the time. N number of people do. I I'd love to take you out for coffee and pick your brain. Well, the challenge with that is if you're busy and up to something and you don't necessarily know what someone's agenda is in picking your brain, it's not an easy yes. Whereas if someone approaches you and they've demonstrated that they really care about what you're up to, um, they've shown they've done their research, and they actually approach it in a way that's unique to something that could add value to you, it's a whole different kind of conversation. And so I'll give an example. So, um, and, 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 and what I found is it actually eventuates opportunities beyond your even reckoning. So there was, there was someone who I had wanted to connect with. I've recently, and it has nothing to do with any self-interest, but I've become passionate about a wolf sanctuary here, here in Los Angeles. And so I invited that person to the wolf sanctuary because it was a very unique experience, right? And I think that's actually another way that entrepreneurs can look at building relationships. What are the ways, and this doesn't have to require a lot of money, in the context of the wolf sanctuary, that person I invited wound up bringing Moby. And Moby was so moved and inspired that he actually wound up inviting me and the head of the wolf sanctuary to dinner at his restaurant where there were other individuals there. And now we're, 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 we have this kind of regular dinner meeting. So. I didn't even necessarily have that intention, but it eventuated out of having a, a genuine care for something. You know, 
Moby's obviously a passionate animal advocate, so he cared deeply about it. That was in his resonance. Same thing with, with Neil Young, you know, polio context was in his resonance. So finding, doing the research to find out what resonates with people, what do they deeply care about, and then providing an opportunity for a unique experience that's a value add to them. I feel like that's a very unique way instead of this kind of transactional, what do you do, here's my card, let me pick your right. brain, context. Personability goes yeah. a long way. Yeah, showing, showing, it, you know, you've got to distinguish yourself and like, mm -hmm. and and show that you've that you care, that you're that you're you're coming first from giving, and and having uh, I think a unique approach, especially as it relates to experiences or or even just just a heartfelt uh, note as to why you care that may be resonant with them. I think goes a long way. Well, what a great story. Thank you so much for stopping by and sharing all of your wisdom and insights. Really appreciate it. It's a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. We are the biggest entrepreneur platform on the planet. This is Business Rockstars.